Okay, everybody, uh, cleanliness standards. Um, yesterday, I showed you this bottle washer, um, which, you know, obviously you're going to scour out bottles with. If you don't want to go, if you can't find one, you don't want to buy one, you go down to the hardware store and just get one of these little two-inch fire hose nozzles, which I've got it hooked up to a quick disconnect system because there's a quick disconnector on my, my work chiller that I have, so it goes on there and i got water real quick, brass stuff. But this little booger, I'll go up inside here and just scour it out too. Um, it's a little harder because you got it on the end of your hose, but it'll work fine. These things generate a lot of pressure off a garden hose. Um, I these are leftover bottles from you know last week's party. When people were done, like I say, these are non-twist off because uh, the the caps won't grip as well to a twist off. Um, you can pop them with the pressure. Um, when people were done drinking these, they were just sitting on beside the sink because all my friends know that I'm brewing. So I'm rinsing them out, shaking them real good, getting them all out, and I just had a box that I put them all in. So we're going to go over here and talk about this. Save, uh, woohoo! Save bottles. Here's a whole bunch of bottles. And what I have is this big muck bucket that I bought. And what I do is I get this, you know, off my hot water heater, I can get 140 degree water, right? So I get about a foot of water in here and then I just start drowning bottles. Right? You just push them down until they start filling up and then they hold themselves down. You have to add a little as you go. And I just start putting these bottles in here. Just fill it up. I do put a little bit of bleach solution. Really what I'm doing at first is just soaking them to get the labels off. So that hot water will do a lot to break up the glue. But I put a little bleach in there just to make sure you know, you're killing everything. And Plus I'm going to let them soak for probably two to three days at least. Um, so that bleach will help keep anything from growing in the water. Um, in you know those two three days, not a lot. There again, I never use a lot of bleach, but uh, just a few ounces, you know, in five or ten gallons is more than enough. Um, put all your bottles in there, just fill it up, let them soak. The labels will usually start falling off. What I normally do is I sit out in the garage and I just you know sit on a chair and start scraping bottles and throwing labels away. Um, at that point, I'll empty the water, rinse them off real good, and then I'll soak them in another straight just straight bleach solution to help make sure they're clean. Um, because I'm going to store these, so I want to make sure they're good to go when I store them. Store them upside down. I put them back in their little 12-pack cases or whatever and store them upside down. Now, you can put them in your dishwasher as well. I would suggest rinsing them with bleach. You can see there's a couple of them actually in there right now. Um, I would suggest rinsing them. Uh, when I clean beer stuff, I don't have, obviously, my household equipment in here as well, but I'll fill it up with bottles and let the 140-degree water scour them for 20 to 30 minutes. The other thing you need to know is... A lot of, in a lot of dishwashers, these arms here that the upper rack comes out on, this little white clip will snap off and the whole rack will just come out. And once it comes out, you can see this thing's plenty tall enough, I can get my five gallon white plastic buckets or my big brew pot in here. And that swing arm will just toss 140 degree water around inside here for 20 to 30 minutes and scour it all out. For that point, they're clean inside and out. I'm not using soap or anything. Sometimes when I'm feeling like it, I'll put a little bit of Idafor solution in there because then I know the water's purified, cleaning it around. Um, I can take them from there back into the garage, fill them up with water, put a little bleach in there, and they, they're uh, sitting around until I need them. Real easy. That's a real easy way to clean stuff. If you're going to clean stuff, just don't use soap. There's no reason to. You need to, you need to scrub with hot water. That's it. If you're going to scrub, be careful you don't use a scrubber that's going to scratch your plastic or scratch your stainless steel if you happen to have any. I don't have any stainless steel, so it's not something I have to worry about. But... Um, all right, so we got clean bottles. We got the labels. You can see the ones that I've already done are pretty much label free, and I'm just going to re-clean those. Like I said, I'll probably put them in the dishwasher, let them boil out for well, not boil, but 140 degrees for 20, 30 minutes is a lot. Um, and then I'm going to store them upside down in my boxes outside. If they store for a real long time, I may wash them again just to make sure there's no dust or anything on them, just because I'm being really picky about cleaning this. Um, okay, equipment like this, I do not soak. So if this isn't used for a long period of time, I rinse it off or I'll stick it in the dishwasher on the top rack. Um, some people may suggest that you just put your, uh, your hydrometer directly into your bucket of beer and let it float and read it up. It's not a good idea. If you do that because whatever reason you want to do that, just make sure you clean that thing real good. Make sure you uh, sanitize it before you put it in the beer. Better is to just go ahead and put the unit in its little tube here. Fill the tube up with beer, then you can read it off that. You give it a little spin to knock bubbles off it so it reads true. You can read it directly off that. And then that beer, talk, throw away. Now, drink it if you're adventurous. I don't know why you'd want to, but um, throw it away. Do not put any beer back into the, uh, the bucket or the uh, carboy. So um, scrub stuff down. Use hot water. Don't use soap. We're going to go back to the famous chair. 
Don't use soap. Um, ooh. A lot of bleach, um, well not a lot of bleach, but regular unscented household bleach, a weak solution of that in hot water or whatever water you're using um, works great. I use both that and Idafor. Um, I think for long term storage, bleach is probably a better so, uh, selection than Idafor, but the Idafor sanitizes um, pretty much instantly. So like your beer caps, you can either boil them out when you're ready to use them and then you just take them you know, and use them, or you can just soak them in an Idafor solution. Idafor is the same way. A couple of drops in a gallon will instantly sanitize anything. Um, you're still going to let it soak for a while anyway. Uh, your brewing pot pretty much sanitizes itself because you're boiling it every time. But when you're done, it's still got crud left behind in it unless you're really good about scraping it down and all, which I'm not. Um, when I'm done with my boiling pot, I clean it out. I clean it out by hand. If it's really bad, I'll put it in the dishwasher and then it just sits out there until I need it next time. And when I need it next time, I'll rinse it out real quick, give it a real quick wipe, make sure there's no dust on it, and then off we go. Um, you, you can go, just don't cut quarters on your cleanliness uh, standards. My uh, high school composition teacher told me that uh, you can start writing the way you want the day somebody pays you to write the way you want. So it's kind of the same thing I apply to a lot of things in life now. Um, when you get experienced in beer making, you can make that decision. But at first, get in the habit of cleaning things correctly and cleaning them well, because you'll go a long way to coming out with better beers um, and a lot less worries about uh, contamination. Contamination doesn't necessarily mean a batch of beer that is undrinkable. It still may be drinkable, um, and you won't maybe know the difference between a batch that's a slightly off um, and what could have happened if it had been, you know, clean and had come out perfect. It still might be drinkable. It just might have an odd flavor or something like that. Yeah, yeah that's weird. I wonder what caused that. And, but, you know, no big deal. Um, cleanliness standards, cleanliness standards, cleanliness standards. Um, just get in the habit of doing them. Clean everything. Uh, clean it correctly. Um, a lot of guys will say, well, you don't need to clean this, you don't need it. Well, you know, like I said, when you get to the point where you feel comfortable to make the decision on what can and can't be cleaned, then make the decision. It's your hobby. Uh, that's about it. Um, that was really just a speech about making sure you keep things clean. But um, any questions, fire away. Uh, next, I guess, is going to be uh, brewing. See ya.